lost in the world of past with the echo of ancient blast there is a man from the future a man of mystery <laughs> yours world he's the man welcome Brilliant. to the science fiction rating system podcast the podcast that aims to rank every science fiction film from one to infinity my name is sam draper and i am joined as ever by chris redding hello hello how are you yeah fine fine yeah hello. you're you're and Alex Humphrey, hey how man. are you? Uh, I'm Alex. good. I'm good. I'm. Uh, it's an early morning. It's an early morning yes. recording, isn't it? Coffee and uh, coffee and chat. I didn't say your. I said I was yawning. Actually. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got some H two O and some cocoa pops. Oh. <laughs> That's wow. My, uh, Other brands my, do exist. My kicker. Yeah. Um, right. So before we get into it, let's do some top of the show housekeeping. So this is the podcast where we put. All these films are a big long list. Every week we rate a new film. And it's a list available at sciencefictionratingsystem.com, uh, which currently has 119 films in it. Wow. What are the Quite t- a lot of films. What are the top five films? Top five films are Predator at five, The Matrix at four, Jurassic Park at Ooh. three, Aliens at two, and Star Trek four, The Empire Strikes Back at number one. Mm. Wow. Uh, and at the very bottom, it's still the lawnmower man. As it's been now for a year and a half uh, since September 2017. Wow. I think it was like scientifically ranked. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, very scientific. Uh, if you want to get in touch and tell us films to watch, we are at science fiction rating system at gmail dot com. We've got a new Twitter and Instagram, haven't we? Twitter right? and Instagram is now sci fi rating. Uh, nice, nice. Got, I just thought it was more, it had the actual meaning of the what we do in the in the name. Yeah, then. yeah, it's yeah. good. Well, yeah. What yeah. about our Facebook? Has that changed? No. What is that Facebook? Is I can f- change it <laughs> if you like. I think you, I think you just search it. In the Whatever you do, area. don't get mixed up with the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. They're idiots <laughs> and know nothing about sci-fi. No. Yeah, don't go to them for, for rankings of films. <laughs> yeah. Or if you're fight. lost at sea, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah. yeah, but like you say, don't come to us if you've got a fire. But also download one of our podcasts if you are as well, because it nothing else is the right time. There. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Before we should get a, a co-branding thing going on, shouldn't we? I think we could. We could actually. It would yeah. save on. It would save on, save on signage, wouldn't it? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's basically who we are, what we do. Uh, the website. Look out because by the time this comes out, the uh, Poppins Claws page will be up Ooh. with the films that we uh, Exciting. didn't get in. So go and check that out because it's taking some time. And yeah, so this week we are watching a film that is Chris's fault. Yeah. Um, if you think <clears> back a long time. We watched... What was the film we watched before? Oh, uh, it was... Uh, Nights. Lance, Nights, that was it. And at the end of that, Chris had the choice between uh, Matrix Trilogy or this, and he chose this because dinosaurs. But I didn't know at the time. No, you didn't know. I think you based um, it more on the fact that this was short and Matrix is it long. It was a flip of the coin, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to be honest, I'm glad you chose this. Oh, it, it, yeah. You know, uh, it, it was, was fun. We've seen worse. Yeah, we've, we have seen worse. We have seen worse. We have definitely seen worse. So yeah, you're the hunter from the future, which is a uh, 1983 Italian film. Um, the most interesting thing about that for me was that did you see that all the names were like anglicized? Yeah. All the yeah. people who made it, yeah, like Antin- Antonio Margheriti, the director. Um, Margheriti. He goes by. Uh, hang on, I've got it here somewhere. Anthony Marge. It's something like that. I think it's Anthony Marshall, isn't it? Anthony yeah. Marshall. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, and the old bloke, Pag, who is called Luciano Pigozzi, uh, is credited as Alan Collins. So. <laughs> <laughs> did, you see, like um, did you see some of Marguerite's uh, credits, some of the films he's made? No, what else did he uh, do? Cannibals before? in the Streets. <laughs> Mis- Brilliant. Mr. Hercules Against Karate. Yeah, <laughs> which sounds like the, right. it sounds like Mr. Hercules put, puts up a petition against the local kind of <laughs> centre that's <laughs> practicing Mr. Hercules. Uh, assignment out of space, uh, nice, and right. the long hair of death. Uh, 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 I have just looked him up. Actually, the one I want to watch is Codename Wild Geese. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds brilliant. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. And also, oh, he made a lot of films, though. Yeah, he made a lot of films. And also, do you see who the screenplay was by? Uh, no, who, who did the screenplay? Robert D. Bailey, who's one of the visual effects people on Blade Runner. Nice. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. No. So nice little bit of a side hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Strange. The apple has fallen far from the tree there, hasn't it? Strange really? career. Yeah. 
So yeah, uh, your let's begin. It starts with, frankly, an amazing theme song, yeah. which you heard a sample of at the top of the show. I might put a little clip in here. And uh, we see your bounding about on some rocks. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that isn't like an internet, like a meme or a thing. That song is so... It's so stupid, like so stupid. I think stupid. if he was more famous, the actor, it would be. But sometimes yeah. those weird little films, like it's those, it's the, it's so weird that that's what gets out there into the cult. We should make it a thing. It's that song is great. I love that song. Th- this film is like weirdly more popular than we knew. Is um, it? Like, yeah. There's like a riff tracks of it. There's oh. um, another one of those things. Loads of podcasts about it. There's tons of stuff about this. It got a anniversary uh, Blu-ray release <laughs> with a commentary by the guy who played Yor. Wow. Which. Yeah, so it's got a weird cult following. Um, mm. Yeah, so you're um, who, by all accounts, is a caveman, and mm. he meets he meets a village of cavemen who are having trouble with a stegosaurus. Is that a stegosaurus, Chris? Is that an accurate? Well, it's actually a bit of a hybrid between a stegosaurus and a triceratops, a stegoceratops. Right. Ooh. Uh, his, his jaw didn't look right to me. It's postulated in like the Jurassic Park sort of universe, actually, this animal. Oh, it's just oh, so right, they can okay. get like the spiky tail with the spiky head on one animal. Right. But <laughs> fair enough. Cool. They lived a hundred million years apart. <laughs> so there's no chance of the yeah. shaggy. Us and us and T Rex are closer than T Rex and Stegote- Stegosaurus and Triceratops wow. used to fight T Rex, so Wow. Uh, it's a valid complaint at this point in the film, but as we will find out, <laughs> not all as it seems, is it? So, well, yeah, uh, I gave. That's where I gave up on science. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Although I um, thought, and also there's a lot of papier mâché involved. Well, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> think the dinosaur looked too bad. It was all right. Yeah, I thought it was all right. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I've, we've a, seen worse. A, I prefer the baby dinosaur, which is a cat with some uh, <laughs> yeah. spikes. <stuck> to... <laughs> yeah. 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 That was. Good. I'm pretty sure that was a cat, right? With some spikes mm, in a spiky like, yeah, like, like onesie. Or a pig, yeah, cat or a pig, I couldn't tell. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah the most interesting thing for me about this dinosaur was that, that Yor had some sort of weird blood fetish and starts drinking yeah. the blood of it afterwards, which yeah. was a strange start to the film. Mm. Yeah. Um, before shouting, help me cut the choice meats, which was a <laughs> fantastic line and a fantastic Are there any choice read. meats on a, on a reptile? <laughs> well, you see them eating later, don't you? And they don't look particularly choice appetising mm. to me. No, no. Mm. Um, but he's doing his best. Yeah, he's met this village of um, of cavemen in very eighties haircuts. At least the woman is the main uh, woman yeah. in the film, yeah. Kalar, uh, and her old mate Pag, who uh, if you've seen Troll Two. That's the grandpa out of Troll Two. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my god! Yeah. You're right. He's great in that. He's really yeah. yeah, he's really bad in that. Yeah, I think he's quite good in this as well, isn't he? He's, he's into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like your is not an actor, is he at all? And he's no. awful. Do you know? And the you woman's know, not very good. Do you know what his but... his most famous roles are? Red Brown. No, he's been. He was Captain America in both the nineteen seventy nine oh, right. Captain America hmm. TV movies, and the second one is called Captain America Two: Death Too Soon. Which is a bit Ooh, of a, right. Yeah. He's also in Howling 2, which, do you know the subtitle of Howling 2? It's one of the best subtitles ever. Howl on? Your sister is a werewolf. <laughs> yeah. Howling nice. 2 is actually Brilliant. not that bad. It's just a hilarious subtitle. But yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So he's basically like one of, he was Captain America before, uh, what's it? Chris, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. He was the oh, last yeah. Captain America. So there you go. Yeah. But yeah, terrible actor. Okay. <laughs> But he looks the part, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks a bit like um, Garth from Wayne's World, but buffed up. He does a bit, doesn't he? Um, Yeah, the other thing to know about Yor, he's got a blood fetish, and also all he has to do is have a woman look at him, and he just falls instantly in love. Mm. Well, he is the only Aryan in the village. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Isn't he? (laughs) He is, yeah. Yeah, I mean they—they're they, very clear that like, oh, he's very different to us, and yeah, that is that he's got the blonde hair well, of a. Uh, yeah, because this yeah. this was kind of one a, of the, the master race. Well, this is the difficulty <laughs> I had at this stage because they just keep going, oh, he's so different, he's so different, and it's like he isn't that apart from yeah, his hair, he isn't that different. He's not I, physically different. I think different. that back then though, people wouldn't. Well, I'm I'm again trying to put like some science onto this. Mm. Uh, you wouldn't, you know, people wouldn't be as. Um, 
accepting of anyone who looked remotely different to their like clan. No. Hmm. But they'd probably try and cave his head in, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. I mean, the the good thing about this film is that a lot of the science stuff is explained later, isn't it? Like the fact they're all mm. talking English to each other. Yeah. You think yeah. this is ridiculous. Well, to be honest, um, this is very like. This is nearly Poppins' clause. If it didn't have that completely oh, yeah, big yeah, spoiler yeah. of a title, by this yeah. point, I, I could imagine Chris sitting there being like, well, this isn't science fiction. Like, well, what the totally. hell? Yeah. Like, I'm not even finishing this. Like, I thought everyone would be like, <laughs> nah, yeah. we're not watching this. But because you've got that title which spoils the twist, which, you know, fair enough. They're trying to sell tickets. But, um, yeah, you kind of stick with it, don't you? But, yeah, it's just a caveman yeah. film at this point. Yeah. Uh and the more cavemen than cavemen get is these hairy cavemen who come out, <laughs> the evil cavemen, who have just like glued bad wigs all over their faces. Yeah. Are they supposed to be like Neanderthals or something? Yeah, yeah I guess, yeah. Um, the evil tribe who, they're not into dancing like this other tribe, no. they're into bashing skulls. Yeah. And mm. They invade the village, but you're, he's got a very particular fighting style, hasn't he? Which is like the slow motion uh, club swing. Yeah, he's good. At In that. All these fight scenes, he does like a kind of a mm. very slow swing left to right, and it's very uh, dramatic. And yeah, they all get the village gets bust up, and Pag, uh, <laughs> the old grandpa, the woman whose name I keep forgetting, Kalar, and your escape. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the film he, he goes. Oh, what happens now? All oh, right, yeah. So she gets they they escape, and she gets kidnapped, doesn't she? Oh, uh, by, by the, the tribe, by the beardy, hairy tribe. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've skipped a lot here, but this film has these weird lulls, doesn't it, where nothing will happen for, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, well, it's kind of... of just... it's, I would say, like, direction-wise, he's pretty on the ball because he knows that every... Yeah, it's like every 10 minutes there's a huge bit of action because he knows yeah. that yeah. you're bored. So he just puts yeah. in this stupid bit of action and it kind of... Yeah. It does keep you going, but it does mean that the plot bits in between, you are a bit like, oh, what was that? What was happening? But, I mean, a lot of the plot bits are basically this woman is really in love with you mm. Mm. And literally anyone who looks at him, she hates and immediately yeah. th- looks terribly upset about it. And and mm. Pag is just very much like, oh, she's great, you're great, let's keep going. Yeah, that's his sort of. <laughs> I thing. think I think the early plot element is that medallion he wears, and he yes. kind of says, oh, I don't know where I came from, and I just had this medallion, and yeah. I've been wandering around looking for my people. And I think that's kind of your that's the rough story. It's when they hide yeah. in that tree for some reason. Yes, yeah. and that's just before she gets kidnapped, isn't mm. it? And Pag does a hero arrow shot to save Yor from being taken. Mm. And uh, we, we go into the cave where the, the, the Neanderthals that live. And they've all got chicken drumsticks, which I liked. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. T- taste, tasty looking tribe in yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, Yor saves the day by uh, hang gliding in attached to... Is that a pterodactyl, Chris, I, that he comes in on? That it's... is so good, that bit. I love that bit so much. I guess... Oh. I mean, it's like furry and... I love yeah, it. Because it, it's, it's brilliant. It's like two shots before you see the thing go over and he shoots... Yeah. So you just like, what is he doing? He shoots it's it. It's more like a bat. Yeah, and it falls yeah. really straight. Did you notice? Like, it falls like you're yes. just dropping yeah. a bit of paper. Yeah. It's because it's made out of papier mache. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, well, that was random. Why did he do that? And then, and then... I think it's a giant bat. It could be a right. giant bat. But I just love the way as he hand glides in, there's that the, the theme, she's like... Yeah! Like kicks yes, him back yeah. in again, and he's like on this stupid yeah. fucking thing, hang gliding into the cave. I was like, well, I guess that, that does make him different from other people. <laughs> There's a lot of mix going on here because that's a mammal now. Yes, <laughs> shooting up. Yeah, um, We're jump, it, jumping around. It, his loincloth must be really tightly glued down, as well, mustn't it? Because he's like, quite <laughs> flipping about and leaping around, and you never get more than just the edge of the arse cheeks, do you? It's yeah. not like no. it's true. He's yeah. very. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. and this is this sort of things where the the lulls work to this film's advantage. I think because it is so she's just screaming a bit, and there's a lot of just standing around. Yeah. So though, it's yeah. even more amazing when he it's when he flies in. Classic twenty million BC or whatever it is, ten million BC sort of camp caveman yeah. shit. <laughs> Actually, there's one bit I missed there as well uh, when he goes to get her back and Pag the old bloke's like, "Oh, you, you lost her in battle. He belongs to this other tribe now." Yeah, and uh, your shouts out. I don't recognise your laws, <laughs> yeah. and then yeah. instantly Pag looks at him and he goes, "Okay, that way." And then Chuck takes him <laughs> to go like all these rules just out. That was your little bit of courtroom drama. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, brilliant. Um, I thought the so um, kind of... I thought the cave the, 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 the like locations are pretty cool. It was filmed in Turkey, yeah. 
and like those caves are pretty extensive you know that there's like the there's yeah. like a pit of snakes a bit kind of indiana jones isn't there and then there's an entire flood through the cave and like it looks yeah, it, it, set wise it's quite right, yeah it? it looks okay like they've, they've yeah. they all look different each location that they go to mm. does look a bit different. They've not just used the same cave complex seven times. You can just see that, like, on-set safety was probably not a priority. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> definitely not. No. No, it's definitely got a... Um... And also, the outside shots, they've got, like, those... You know, those, like, thin rocks with boulders on top. Which I yeah. assume... <laughs> that must be set dressing, wasn't it? They don't exist. But they look pretty real, don't they? Mm. Mm. It was... Unless they found them. I don't know. There were scenes... It's but... Turkey and scenes shot in... Cappadoc- Cappadocia, Cappadocia. I'm sorry for the mm. you know, Turkish people. I can't pronounce. There's that. some quite impressive places in yeah. places like Turkey, like natural and old yeah. as well, like quite Phenomenal. ancient land. I would think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's his first set of piece. His second set of piece. We get more brilliant scenery. This is all like the sort of Tuscan Raider sand people bit of the film, isn't it? This yeah. dusty yeah. tribe who are ruled by a witch, who he's told don't go and see the witch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But your thinks which woman? I'll go and see her. And how <laughs> they had much? mentioned a witch earlier on, though. They have, they? yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, they said she's got the same medallion. Mm. Doesn't you think she looks just like Amelia Clark? Mm. Like Daenerys. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I thought so. she does a spitting image of her. It was really yeah, weird. I guess. Um, which yeah, one's she... that? The Game of Thrones girl. Yes. Yeah. She's in Terminator. Eight or whatever, yeah. Right. She's not a very good actress, but but she just looked exactly the same. I thought Lucy didn't think it either. But for me, I just every time I thought that's uncanny. Um, this that actress, this is her only credited role. <laughs> There's literally nothing else she's in. So what's going on there? Like, it's that, how weird is that? That is really weird. Because she's not particularly worse than the rest of them, is she? No. She's just no. Um, yes, yeah, so um... the evil witch who's got this um, cult of dusty people around her. Uh, she's got the medallion that yours got, and so he's in love again now, yes. straight away. She's blonde, and so he's gone for her as well. Yeah. Yes, he knows that the, she's got the Aryan look about her, and they they can they can. It's be very lovers. racially segregated. This film, isn't it? It's got very strange messages yeah. going on. Mm. They literally say "master race" at the end, don't they? As well, when yeah. you get to the yeah. uh, the bit towards the end, um, she's kind of conflicted, though, isn't she? She's sort of she likes him, but. She doesn't like him and she wants him. She can't let him go, can she? No. Uh, also, they could they... possibly be related. Is kind of I thought it was a bit hinted at. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and do you notice? You know the tribe that's basically all about flame. This guy's. Yeah. And there's some great shots of the extras carrying flames, and there's a really good um, shot of them coming in a procession. And the guy at the front looks so terrified of the flaming sword <laughs> falling on him. <laughs> His like, eyes are looking up all the way through the scene, like he, he's oh. thinking, "Oh shit, shit, don't want to drop this." Yeah. Um, I did read. Probably just. <laughs> I did witness someone being burned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I read that on the on the IMDb thing. It says many of the stuntmen were just well built locals, resulting uh, in actors, including Red Brown, to be hit with rubber clubs and hatchets all the time. Oh right! One incident about eighteen minutes into the film, Brown got hit in the face with a rubber hatchet, which caused his face to swell for the rest of the day. So, <laughs> some of those fights wow. are real, basically. Yeah, yeah, I can believe it. <laughs> yeah, so they are scared because they're like. What am I doing on set yeah. <laughs> with this flaming sword? Yeah, what? that's. I, I mean, that, to be here. they use that that sword on fire goes on for like ages, doesn't it? Yeah, it's pretty yeah. great. And then he throws it at someone. He throws Perfectly a flaming straight. yeah in, yes. right in there. Oh, that's great. I loved it. It's another quite fun set set piece, isn't it? Yeah. Like setting the flame flame fire. People were flaming on the floor and yeah, um, yeah. Like I say, the yeah. film. He's like I said. He, he's got. A, he's got. A, he's intelligent enough to direct it that just when you're kind of flagging. It's like, nope, here's some stupid shit just to keep you interested. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely definitely can respect it. Um they get out and back with the back with what was his name? Pag and um Kala. 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 Yeah. And tensions are arising because now Yor has two women. <laughs> and uh, the film does make explicit several times that, that he owns these women. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, which is troublesome. <laughs> Uh, at the end, when the Overlord says that I own everything, uh, the comeback isn't you shouldn't own people. It's no, I own her. That's the, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was that interesting. Clear? Yeah, <laughs> it's not. This is not a woke film. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so they we get this kind of awkward uh, bit of the film now where they've got a nice raft, don't they? A lovely raft out of um, oh yeah yeah yeah. Wood. Never beach barbecue. Raft. Yeah, and. Uh, the beach... Oh, is this for the Ewok village? No, that's later on, isn't it? That's after the Ewok woman village. dies. 
Yeah, so th- this is this is the weirdest bit of the film, really, because the first woman, Kalar, basically tries to kill um, <laughs> yeah. Roa, the other woman, yeah. and she doesn't renege on this plan, does she? She just gets lucky that someone else gets oh, to kill yeah. her first. Yeah. yeah. And they never really address that, that no. she was literally going to murder <laughs> yeah. this, this other and, woman. And obviously, like, she has secrets to yours past. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's... Yeah, she knows some shit. There's those other guys that are yeah. in the ice in her cave. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I was hoping those guys in the ice in her cave, like the it would melt and they'd be like in like really like seventies or eighties like like American football outfit or like they'd be in like some really <laughs> modern outfits and you'd be like oh yeah. shit like oh look that just looks like a yuppie what the hell like I thought it'd be like that but they don't do that. Uh, again, that is bizarrely competent filmmaking that they kind of do foreshadow that, isn't it? With the mm. people in the ice, and they don't immediately mm. just bust them out. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they're zombies or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Ro is dead. She's uh, yeah. She and, and she gets a lovely little um, Stonehenge gravestone. <laughs> which yeah. I wrote that down. Touch. I wrote that yeah. down. <laughs> Did they mine into the stone to put her underneath it? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Nah. It was lovely. It was like, you know, in Spinal Tap when they have the tiny Stonehenge coming down. It yeah. was like that, wasn't it? It was uh, falling <laughs> yeah. on the grave. Yeah, and nice they, he lights a little fire. Yeah. Yeah. Underneath. Yeah, yeah. to remember a bye. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they go to the beach and uh, there's, there's some suspicious fishing going on. She's fishing for... She's managed to catch these gigantic fish mm. uh, Kalar <laughs> has by just, like, spearing the yeah. very, like... You know the the tide basically coming in, <laughs> just spearing. I the identify smoke, so. what fish they were. Sorry, no, they're not 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 correct fish. They must be fish, mm. wasn't they? I suppose they're fish. Yes, but, but I can't identify them. Sorry, no, not oh, enough okay. info. Damn it! It's all right. Out of your remit, Chris. It's not a yeah, dinosaur sorry. fish, so it's okay. How about that? Can you identify the uh, next <clears throat> dinosaur they fight? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be uh, Dimitrodon. Like it's a classic sort of uh, caveman film yeah. animal they just get a lizard and stick a <laughs> sail on the back of it yes yeah like but again uh, this is even watched? Uh, this is oh, even earlier uh, this is like 300 million years old this animal right, so this okay. is this um, is four times the age of the stegosaurus oh and the God. triceratops that we saw before yeah that was um journey to the center of the earth wasn't it's it? not that even was a it, dinosaur yes. this it's not even classed as a dinosaur it's called a uh, synapsid which is before di- dinosaurs God. Oh. Learning. Who thought we would be learning something whilst watching you? Yeah. There you go. Well done, Chris. You've educated mm. us through the use of a terrible film. <laughs> no I sweat. wish there had been a a future Chris character in this as well, who was like there giving them these explanations. Yeah. Should have been. I'd nice. be trying to study them and then just get eaten. <laughs> yeah. And like, just no one knows what he's talking about. It'd be really, yeah. really good. Another twist yeah. to it. Or when they try and like snag a cat with like some spikes on the on its back, I'll go. <laughs> I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, he's uh, he rescues some children from this. What was it called? A Demetrodon. Was that what it's called? Mm. Yeah, and um, takes them back to the the village of people who live on the beach. Um, as, as I put Ewok village, all grown up. That's what I mm. put yeah, this yeah. As. I could see that. And the guy here has like. He's the only guy in the film who's had a proper haircut, isn't he? He's got yeah. like a very... This guy who... All the bitches are his. He's very clear about that. Everyone here, mm. these are my bitches. Mm. Uh, yeah. I rule this place and I've had a haircut. You uh, own my daughter. Yeah. Who His daughter, daughter who is who looks like Chinese. You should be like, and, you own her now, so you have to marry. And he goes, it's fine, I've got a mate. And he yeah. goes, <laughs> it, at that point, he should go, can you just shag her instead? Because... We need the babies. <laughs> yeah. We want to mix up the gene pool a bit. <laughs> yeah, he, he does That's... walk off though, doesn't he? Though he's like, he's like, yeah, I'll take her. It's fine. He's not really <laughs> yeah. against it, is he? No. Yeah. Because you get another look of like Kalar going like, oh no, he's gone off again. And then he goes, no, you come too, and she looks all happy. Yeah. At the very beginning, I thought they were going to sacrifice the kids because you know when they lift up the kids <laughs> oh, to the yeah. sky, really oh, strangely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought, oh great, we're going dark with this straight away. But they yeah. just literally just lifted them up to the sky. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. Um, There's a lovely set design here as well. You know the cave that was behind them, and it kind of has this like red and yellow paint um, (laughs) against it, which I thought looked a really nice look to it. Quite interesting. It's probably a real thing. Like, it could be a real site somewhere. Well, it's not, is it? Because when they go into it, it's quite clearly just paint, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, 
<laughs> it could be, yeah. <laughs> it could we be. finally get some sci-fi, uh, though, don't we? At last. Yeah, it's it's red and yellow because there's a like a little black. It looks like um, like a headlamp on a car, doesn't it? Like the other bottom ones mm. you get on the bumper. <laughs> yeah. it looks like one of those ones just pulled out of a bumper. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what, that's what a lamp's called. And they're all very confused by it, and they they say they're explosive and don't touch it and all this sort of stuff. Mm. Um, and that night, while they're all having a lovely party, lasers come out of nowhere. I mean, they, they never really established where those lasers do come from, do they? No. They're not from the caves, are they? No, they just you just hear them. Yeah, they're just out. Of, they yeah. are literally out of the sky, I guess. Maybe. Well, they're kind of like off stage left. So that's what's weird about it. Because you think <laughs> if you just turn the camera, you're sure you'd see where those lasers are coming from. Or no. anyway, that, I'm thinking too hard about it. I know uh, it destroys the place, and the the little device starts talking to them. And the, my favorite line in the whole film: "Your grabs the box and just goes." Damn talking box! <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, I read as well with that that he it said that a lot of his stuff was dubbed, uh, but yes. like that wasn't dubbed. But it said that you know that wasn't brilliant. You know the bit where she's dancing and he's going like good, good like that. Uh, yeah, that's dubbed. And all that the all the actor was doing was just burping continually on each take, <laughs> and they just dubbed over what? him saying good. Yeah, that's what it said in the. Uh, yeah, in IMDb. On purpose, or just he couldn't he could, burping? Because he doesn't need to talk, does he? Because he knows he's going to be dubbed, so he could do whatever he wants, I guess. So he just burped. He just decided to burp, yeah. Commitment to the craft. <laughs> but yeah, damn talking strange, box, I think, is all burp. him. Brilliant. I mean, that is the, the, the top line reading. I watched that a bit twice. It was so... Uh, <laughs> it, it was so moving. Yeah. Um... And he has to kiss by to another woman now, because they're leaving this village. This bit of the adventure's over. He's also... And this boat they build... Go on, sorry. No, I was just going to say, he also swears to avenge everyone in the village, but he's known them for about five minutes, hasn't he? Like, I mean, you don't get... The, yeah, but there's they, no they time. a party. Yeah, they did have a good party, I guess, yeah. It's been a good party, <laughs> you feel like you know people longer, yeah. The music's true. not as good as the actually walks, though. No, no, no. Mm. They've lost that skill as they got older. <laughs> yeah. Lost their fur. <laughs> I mean, it does appear that yours life is... Does, he's just going somewhere for like five minutes, isn't it? Mm. And then disaster follows him. Yeah. Because everywhere, presumably, before he got to these places, they've all built up communities and nothing's gone wrong. No. But literally everywhere he's gone, as he leaves, it's destroyed. Mm. So, you know, is he a hero? Mm. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe not. Mm. <laughs> uh, but no, the boat they build is fantastic. This boat <laughs> they uh, sail out in. It's crap. Oh, I really liked it. Like the hay boat. It's really like... Hay um, boat. <laughs> It's, it's like one prop. of them boats you see, you know, when you used to get them books and it used to show like cavemen's boats. Yeah. They but basically it's a real just one. copied it out of a well, one of them crappy books. But it sails, isn't it? You see them on the sea with it. Yeah. It, must, yeah. it must have sailed. Well, it, I don't know. It's the kind of film where you can imagine they just went to a museum in Turkey and went, can we have that boat for our film? And they went, yeah, sure, go for it. And just like took it out yeah. and then went, oh, we'll just use this boat. Oh, mm. shit, it's destroyed. Oh, well. It's wrecked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put that they back in the museum. They kind of made a hull out of the hay. Yeah, they made a what? I think it's they kind of made the hull out of hay. Yeah, um, it would just sink. Yeah, actually, I've got a still here of them on the water, and it does look mid sinking. Like the back <laughs> of it is like pretty they've much tried submerged. to base it, I think, on like an Egyptian reed boat, which was just yes. a huge, like round, yeah. circular thing of reeds. Yeah, you used to see in all them old books. I like yeah. the pelt sail. Yeah, yeah. Again, would that really have enough? <laughs> I don't think it to move it. the boat. It's got massive holes in it as well. So wouldn't that affect the, the the you know the the sail? Wouldn't be a sail, would it? If it's got huge bits missing no. out of it. If all the things for you to be so capsulated by, you're, <laughs> you're very like you're very taken with this Is boat. The, aren't you, uh, Sam? Yeah. Wow. I just think the set dressing is really good. Yeah, I just didn't affect. No, it didn't like affect that. you. No, no, no I okay. just wrote they're getting a yeah. boat. I think. Well, yeah. were you affected by the the big twist that comes? Oh out? hell yeah! It gets it just it, we, it was even even with me saying all the action is fun. The kind of film had lulled, I would say, at this point. And yeah, then I was but, expecting oh, a twist, though. Yeah, of course, it, because of the title of the film. Well, yes, yes, <laughs> but it powers. God, it I, powers. I managed to pretty much completely forget it. <laughs> you forgot. You forgot it was from the future. Yeah, I know. Well, I knew it was from the future, but I forgot there was going to be... Because we saw in the trailer, didn't we, the Overlord and stuff, but I forgot all this was going to happen. So I was mm. quite like, oh, wow, this is... Um, yeah, he's got... Like, the, there's a, like a scrying orb, and they're watching what's going on. 
Yeah. And we've got like a load of low rent sort of bondage Darth Vaders. Yeah. And then it's like, the Overlord, who is just the guy in a cape, isn't he? It was uh, it was the costumes worn by the Overlord and the guards were left over from the Humanoid, 1979, uh, which Antonio oh, right. Margariti did the special effects for. So he's just ripped his own, like he's just taken stuff from another film, basically. Um, yeah. But they're very much Darth Vader at, from the back and then a, a rush job at the front to make it look less like Darth Vader at, at the front, aren't they? Yeah, they they look like a gimp mask from the front. Yeah, they do they? look like a gimp mask, yeah. It's like gimp Darth Vader. Yeah. Gimp Vader, that's what I'm going to call these there's guys. Some, <laughs> there's some great... We, we haven't seen as bad robot acting since... Um, uh, what's it? The uh, What was the really, really hilarious one that we, we watched? Oh, I wrote it down. Star Crash. It's, it's the level Star of Crash. Star yeah, Crash yeah. robot acting, isn't it? Where people just yeah. walk a bit slower and a bit stiffer, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> The end of this film is very Star Crash all over, yeah. isn't it, really? It gets into that territory. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Overlord, um, John Steiner, is having loads of fun mm. because he does a lot of looking at things <laughs> menacingly <laughs> and and everything is going to his plan repeatedly. And his plan is to capture Yor. They've been following him for a long time. And he's <laughs> there's a, there's a, They're all in black and then you've got the rebels who are dressed in white. Mm-hmm. And... The one thing he's neglected to notice is that his chief scientist is wearing white. <laughs> so she's experimenting on your, yeah. and he's like, yeah, do this, do that. But I just thought, you know, come on, this is pretty basic. Everyone who works for his way in black, you know the rebel's in white. She's got white clothes on, therefore yeah. Yeah. it's a rebel. But um, he's just, he's just, I, you know, he's I screamed at the screen, but yeah. he didn't listen to me. The Overlord didn't hear. Mm. <laughs> and, yeah, so what's his plan here? His plan is to... To so the Overlord's got his androids, hasn't he? He's from a, a race of people who were wiped out by nuclear war. I guess us, that is. Mm. Yeah. And he has built this army of androids, but what he but really wants the to do. First generation, he needs to uh, upgrade. Get yeah. a better generation of androids yeah. with That's some it, yeah. uh, DNA from your and yeah. and perf- Carla. Oh, is it? Or does it and and Carla? Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, who, I wasn't sure of that because he says that, doesn't he? Then he but then he, yeah. he brings out two android women. I don't know who he wanted to actually get. Well, were they women? <laughs> There's like two pop out of a tube at the end when he yeah, goes like, oh, I need you to yeah. inseminate them. And I yeah. thought, but then he does Range. put Yarl or whatever into the, uh, mm. Kalar into the thing, doesn't he? So yeah. basically yeah. he wants people to fuck to make him better people. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Really? That's well, robot he wants to people. kill all the people and get, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Because the robots planet are, with robots. Yeah. Who are loyal to him. Yeah. I don't really understand that. No. Um, yeah, still very racially segregated though, isn't it? Like, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is where he says, like, create my master race, I think, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's um, also oddly has the same, uh, he uses the same, like, evil plan as the Daleks use because he tells the people, oh, every is irradiated, <laughs> yeah. you can't go out there, it's all <laughs> yeah, fucked. Yeah, 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 and yeah. in fact, it's just a lie, it's all fine, there's tons of people and yeah. animals yeah. and all sorts. Are we to assume that if it's a post apocalyptic, that all them animals out there, have re-evolved. Yeah. Like animals which from 200 million years ago have... Yeah. So that's how they got around your damn science, Chris, is that it's the future and there's some weird sort of... That would be very... (laughs) Yeah, the odds of that would be remote, Mm. to say the least. (laughs) Uh, My my interpretation is that humans had evolved to a stage where we had made literal Jurassic Parks. Yes, Uh, and that went wrong. It took. uh, That might be where the films are going. Makes sense. Makes sense. I, I particularly, so, I particularly like the bit where the Overlord is explaining his plan, and he kind of walks mm-hmm. two steps forwards and is like staring off into the distance, explaining his plan. And you're just like looks at the door and then just leaves, and just like walks out. Just he does, and then and then yeah. the Overlord turns around, and does this smile like, oh yeah, that's what I planned for you to uh, just I like, to <laughs> yeah, I wanted him yeah. to just walk off while I was talking. Like it's like I I don't know if he did plan that. He's you know. The Overlord who also has the amazing force power of not using a keyboard. When he there's a computer <laughs> and the woman uses the keyboard, he just waves his hand over the top of those keys. That's as far as his force power seems to go. He's controlling. No, he's got the bright light from his hand as well. That's oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, because they're watching. There's like a greatest hits of your going because your your <laughs> your name's Gala. His name's Galahad, and uh, the scientist's like, yeah, so. You're actually called Galahad, son of the rebel leader, and we've been looking for you and stuff. And he's like, I don't believe this. And she goes, no, look, check this out. And they watch the screen, and 
it's meant to be your as a as a child on his first hunt, isn't it? He looks exactly yeah, yeah. the same. And then there's like this tiny little lizard, this little like gecko <laughs> thing and that he's hunting. Yeah. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, he, he escapes um, and the rebels are, are mounting their uh, resistance. There's like a blind rebel leader, isn't there? Yeah. Who, I mean, I'm not, a I'm not, medallion. I'm all for, you know, everyone getting a chance, but I don't think he's the best leader. Also, I don't no. really think, see why he has to attend to the robot memory banks. Is he up for that job? <laughs> I mean, is that the job yeah. we should be giving the blind guy that seems to have a lot of trouble wandering <laughs> around the corridors? Like, you know, where yeah. do they get? Where do they manufacture all their shit from? That's, they were in they a, got, like factories somewhere. It, it looked like a kind of factory, didn't it? Well, they were the rebels or everyone or anyone. Well, yeah, I mean, towards the end, they're going to look, look, what looks like a power plant, doesn't it? Mm. It's like a power plant attached to, like, some medieval, like, Yeah, I think the set walls. must have been a power plant, right? Somewhere. Yeah. It's crazy. Because there's, there's a few shots where they, they put, like, red pipes going across the old stone, which I guess is the stuff coming out of the power plant into uh, the overlords. It could be, like, um, geothermal energy or something. Maybe, maybe. Um, I think I'm overthinking it. I think you are. <laughs> the, the, the rebels, are, the rebels have got their plan together. They're going to basically blow this whole thing up because they're not impressed with it. Mm. Blow this but, uh, mother up. Yeah, yeah. But but before this, the Overlord um, puts into plan his most dastardly of schemes, which is the Hall of Mirrors. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like I this thought, scene. The lift. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not the lift. No. That's a bit later. No, it's that crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Hall of Mirrors just yeah. isn't doesn't isn't that effective? Is it? No. It's amazing. No. As a scene. No. no. I don't know. I mean, really. like, is it that... In- they've got the best mirrors they can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it just doesn't quite work. It's Because what you need to do with a hall of mirror is you need to set the shot up where you don't see any mirrors. You just see the person. Mm. Or the camera. They, like, they start off too wide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you can see he's in a hall of mirrors. And then yeah. when he tries to walk forward... He's in a hall of mirrors, but we knew that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny, and it doesn't make sense that they, they, they pan it, and it is so small a room, isn't it? Yeah, and she's yeah. got that one like stone totem pole in there, mm. and she's obviously been told walk These around boys a lot. Need to watch John Wick. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, then hit the hit the stone thing, and get scared. But she kind of walks just. She looks at it basically a lot of times, isn't she? Then walks into it and goes ah. Yeah, um, a mirror in itself would be amazing for a like caveman, right? Yeah, yeah. He'd just be staring at the mirror for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is that odd to think that that bit in Enter the Dragon had such an influence on cinema? <laughs> you know, like it's good in Enter the Dragon; it yeah. works well. But in this, you're right. It just is like, why has he got this room? Like, what is he that self obsessed that he just goes in there and like, oh, look at me? Like, well, I mean, I don't know because I think the idea is that they're like lost in their minds, isn't it? Something. Because they walk around each other, don't they? Like, look at each other and go, oh, where are you? And then eventually they bump into each other and have a big yeah. snog. Yeah. I don't really know what's yeah. going on, to no. be honest. But it's just such a strange, it's a really bizarre scene. And I think mm. those, like, there's more of those stone heads appearing throughout it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I did spot the cameraman only once I spotted him, but he was definitely there. Did, <laughs> catch, did you catch him? No. <laughs> yeah, he's Marcello he's... Maschiotti. Mas- was that who it was? Yeah. Yeah. That's the cameraman? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Shout out to Muskello. <laughs> you know on uh, Inglorious Bastards when uh, Brad Pitt, you know, when they're all doing like impressions of Italian, they're all pretending to be Italian filmmakers. Mm. I'm pretty sure one of them calls himself Antonio Margaretti. Oh, wow. Well. have to check that scene. It's Tarantino. You never I could know. believe it. Yeah, I yeah. could believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Tarantino would be uh, into this stuff, wouldn't he? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where are we at now? They get out and big big battle. Man, everyone gets guns. Yeah, big... Everyone shoots it. They've got those great guns that just look like big remote controls, don't they? They don't. I mean, they're yeah. they're like if someone designed a gun, they wouldn't build it that way. It's just it's like holding a box. <laughs> well, it's the arm, isn't it? Well, They've ripped the arm. Oh, off is it the right? arm of a robot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the oh, right hand arm. Of the all right. Yeah. Well, now, well, you've made that make a lot of sense. I just thought they were like the worst <laughs> yeah. designed guns I'd ever seen. I was like, what? This is stupid. Yeah, a lot of shooting. It gets quite blaster heavy at this point. It was quite good. Um, the grandpa's doing a lot of action, isn't he? He's, uh, yeah. he's really into it. Yeah. Um, and then the the overlord gets trapped in his lift. Oh yeah. And 
It's probably one of the least... Oh, no, before that, actually, you've got the trapeze scene. It is scene, Antonio. I've just checked that scene. It is Antonio Margaretti. Ah, oh, well. Well done, Tarantino. Yeah. Good shout. Good shout. Mm. Uh, there's a brilliant trapeze scene, isn't there? Where, oh, um... oh, my God. Oh, you mean the uh, Star Star Wars rip-off? It, yeah. That but is... It's better than Star Wars because it's an, it's an old man upside down yeah. doing the same Star Wars movie. That has got to uh, be... And the models. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the worst it's effects probably... I've ever seen. I mean, it's got to yeah, be like... The, the, the little plastic models that swing back across. <laughs> yeah, and it just flips over. It just goes upside down yeah, When I first bit. saw it, I thought there was two of them on it. <laughs> oh, there is two of them on it. There are two, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, one model upside grabs down. the model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. so um, bad. Like, yeah. it's so bad. It's a more exciting way. But it, it's and it's so clear, like, like just like a shot-bought model of a bloke, isn't it? It yeah. looks nothing like you're at all, really. No. I think they've used, like, an action man yeah. and painted it or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, probably. it's amazing. When they swing back, it's just uh, mm. yeah, fantastic. Uh, yeah, so they swing back, which is pretty exciting, but not quite as exciting as the Overlord getting killed with a gigantic <laughs> cone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a great death. Which, uh, it's a great death. It's like a safety cone, isn't it? I like yeah. that he's got these safety cones up in his in his evil lair. He's well, for these... when they do football training. Oh, do you think? <laughs> yeah. 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 They also do the Flash Gordon thing with the impaling of the barber's pole as well. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But isn't it like, because um, Pag's going to like, sh- Pag's, Pag's going to shoot him and you're like, no, no, don't yeah. shoot him. Hold on, I'm going to do this. And just like, just shoves that thing through him. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's a great death. Well done, Overlord. That's be- isn't that because though, there's something about an illusion, isn't there? Like there's, there's, you can't shoot an illusion. Oh. Isn't, doesn't someone say that at some point? Oh, I'm yeah, sure no. says that. Is it that he's kind of, yeah, he's not ever, yeah, they do say that. Like, he's not really there a lot of the time. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's weird, wasn't it? I don't really know. Well, anyway, it doesn't really matter, does yeah. it? Um, uh, and the Overlord almost gets his revenge. As the film hits his climax and the, the deaf guy, the sorry, the blind guy is doing a big speech about, we won't be oppressed, <laughs> we'll get out of here, you're going to blow up. And all the way through the shot, the Overlord is creeping across the floor, with, impaled, mm. to try and get to the button, which I suppose is the off button, I guess. I yeah, he's not going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When yeah. he's walking towards a button, that's quite a funny... Brilliant scene, yeah. Because he's got, like, these brilliant... Um, he's got, like, uh, like knight's gauntlets, hasn't he? These fantastic-looking yeah, yeah. metal gauntlets, yeah. which yeah. are They're like brilliant. ring-wraith gauntlets. Yeah, they are, yeah. Brilliant character design. Uh, he doesn't get there, and uh, you're managed to escape in the, the spaceship, which is their big sort of shot, big final shot, flying off into sunset, and the, uh, the, the voiceover says that he's off to... Go and teach the world to not make the same mistakes yeah. as they made before. Mm. And it, well, they just on, on, blew up all the technology, so they're going to be in caveman land for quite a few centuries. So <laughs> yeah, especially because your appears to be he'll be long dead. Yeah, he's got no idea, has he? He's thick. No. Your yeah, no. Um, it does also end with, the, with he actually doesn't have any knowledge. He just has seen a load of shit. Yeah, yeah. They'll think he's mad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it does end with will he succeed? Question mark. Like yeah, question mark. Like yeah. even the film doubts that he would succeed. Like, <laughs> yeah, the film's not convinced. I just hoped it was it, win. it was setting up like your two family man or something. You know, <laughs> hunter of the past. Yeah, be nice. That might hunter. be <laughs> <laughs> builder of the past. That would be builder. Just, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was fun um, though, wasn't it? It was terrible it was fun. fun. You know, of all these like bad films we've watched. This for me was the best. One of the better film. ones, yeah. Yeah. So let's go around and final thoughts, Chris. What What do you think of your then as as an overall piece of work? There? I um, I went in with low expectations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were met and maybe slightly surpassed. I thought it was it was not a it was fun. And as you yeah. say, the directing it and the writing it kept like a little bit of action going. All times, hmm. yeah. Uh, so, but the the story basic, nothing much to write home about as no. far as <laughs> ideas. No. Yeah, a little bit Doctor Whoy for me, which I struggle with. Yeah, yeah. and the dinosaur stuff was gubbins. <laughs> so uh, that that makes me mark it down a little bit because yeah. of the dinosaur mm. stuff. Um, yeah, but do you better want a number from me overall. now, or do you, yeah, better than I expected. Yeah. yeah. Alex, what's your overall? Yeah, take? it was good fun. I agree with everything Chris said. Uh, I couldn't judge the dinosaurs. I thought the effects were okay. I, I preferred <laughs> Star Crash 
Because oh man, it was so papier mâché, papier mâché. I, I, I thought they looked the better than I thought they were going to look. I had very low expectations. Um, yeah. yeah, you preferred Star. I Crash, preferred though. Star Crash because I just think there's there's a uh, there's a lot of really funny like it's that robot in Star Crash. His lines, that kind of Texan robot, whatever he was called. Yeah, he yeah, was he so was hilarious. Um, <laughs> and but I thought this was good. This was it was. There's nothing like mental in this, like them other films. No, films, no it, it didn't. No. Yeah, it didn't go that one extra step into the crazy. And I think, um, in a way, it, it, like uh, if this had more budget but the same plot, they probably would have kept that twist to the end. They would have allowed you mm. to think mm. it was all, you know, oh, where's he from? Where's he from? And then like, oh shit, science fiction. Like, you know, it's just because it's a cheap film and they're trying to cash in and get people to go. Um, so yeah, like yeah, I, it was good fun though, very enjoyable, and I yeah, I love that theme tune. There's some funny, there's some brilliant moments. It's well worth a watch. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I'm also broadly in agreement with you two. I think for me, the thing that bring, brought it down was the fact that it did lull so badly in those bits when there was no action. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of just like shot reverse shot of people saying nothing at all really for a long mm-hmm. time, but it was still you know fun to watch, and I love the Overlord. He was great fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is and... essentially still in the bin of people cashing in off Star Wars, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And Conan as so. well. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's at least got something a little bit original going on. The idea of a caveman in the future is something a bit different. Mm. Um, d- did you know there's a... a in, in Italy, it was screened as a TV series. Oh, and really? there's about another half an hour footage, yeah. Which... <laughs> oh, so they just chopped it up. Wow. Yeah, they chopped it up, but, but added more back in as well, and they chopped it up. It's oh, like wow. a mini series, so, cool. so hopefully there's some wicked dinosaur stuff in that. Yeah, like if that gets released in the future, I have to come back and watch your the extended cut uh, <laughs> at some point. But um, yeah, I, I think yeah, not not as terrible as as like um, nights. No. But yeah, perhaps not as good as Star Crash. I've noticed you haven't even filled in the date and the director of Knights on the uh, board here. No, I haven't. Have I? That's a real <laughs> oversight. Yeah, <laughs> never been didn't deserve that. No, I wasn't of that. So where are we going to put this film? Uh, Alex, where would you put this film in the, I, uh, in the list? See, there's a little sting here. It's Star Crash and then Flash Gordon. So I think it's yes. probably... I, I do really love Star Crash. So I think it's probably under Flash Gordon because Flash Gordon's a better uh, made film. Uh, hmm. so yeah I think it's but it's in that little patch there because it was just as enjoyable and you know what I'm putting what I'm, numbers are, well, where, where are we looking uh, what's uh, numbers 74, 70, 75 yeah I'm putting oh, it above yeah. Ender's game so yeah I enjoyed it it was just fun wasn't it so I know everyone yeah, hates Ender's game that. so <laughs> Chris what, what do you think I'd put it a little bit lower just below some of these like stupid films like Journey to the Centre of the Earth and It was better than that, wasn't it? Maybe, yeah. Uh... What do you think? Um That was bad. Mm, okay. <laughs> um, um Yeah, maybe you yeah, maybe you're probably about right. I did you put it above space balls? Yeah. I would, I would, definitely. You put it above um, space balls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and safe not guaranteed. So really, yeah, Alex has said seventy uh, six. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Go on. Then. Yeah, it's good fun. You, you're right. It fits in well that little trilogy there of. Yeah. Of this sort. In fact, that would be a, that would be a heck of a heck of a film festival if you do would, yes. Star Crash, <laughs> Your, and Flash Gordon. That would be you know get Brian Blessing yeah, to come down. <laughs> <Ricky Pillow. laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that would be great fun. Um, one day, maybe the first SFRS fest, yeah. if that ever happens, we'll. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I've, that that one I've written in. It's put it in in like weird sort yeah, of yeah. You've done it in like grey writing. You can't see it. That's a bit strange. Oh well. Um, okay, fantastic. Thank you all for that. Let us um, pop into the future to find out what's happening next week. Ooh. Past, I mean, Hello. next week we are watching Star Trek Six. We've Yay. waited six months or so. Perhaps a bit longer, and we finally <laughs> are allowed to watch more Star Trek. Woohoo! And Is it because uh, Discovery's back as yeah. well? Ooh. Have you started watching that yet, Sam? No, I go up after oh. the last series. It was oh right, you know it's good. Is it? Yeah, the new captain pretty good. Yeah, yeah it ended quite well. I yeah. haven't watched these new ones. Is it? Bit, are the new ones been just as I, good? Chris? I like it. It's great. Oh, good. Mm. Okay. 
Good. It's different. Don't chance. get me wrong. I always have to watch a little bit of old next gen afterwards just to <laughs> get back into. You know. I see. You see. I just want something in the in that universe. Mm. I don't like. Oh, all you this. might get it soon. Well, I will. Ooh. Yeah. Picard mm. time. Um, Picard time. Anyway, yeah, we're going back to the old original crew for their last proper outing. Um, it's Star Trek Six: The Undiscovered Country. Chris, can you remember what this film's about? This tells the story of the Enterprise crew. They're about to uh, retire, but they get stitched up and framed for killing the leader of the Klingons and mm. and to start a war, and they get locked up, and that's basically it. Yeah. Uh, mm. How long ago has everyone seen this, Chris? Oh. A uh, couple of days? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, a couple of months, maybe. A few months. Alex? Years. Years, years. ago. Years ago. I'm going to say this is the dark horse of the Star Trek franchise. That's what my... Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I remember in... thinking it was good, though, when I yeah. saw it. Let's let's watch a trailer, shall we, for... Even within Federation space is suicide. They're animals. Jim, they are dying. And you, Captain Kirk, are to be our first olive branch. Me? The galaxy stands at a crossroads. This is the Starship Enterprise. We've been ordered to escort you to your meeting on Earth. Guess who's coming to dinner? I have so wanted to meet you, Captain. One warrior to another. Right. On the verge of peace. The undiscovered country. The future. Cool. Yeah. Looks great. That's how you do a trailer. Damn right. Yeah. Kling I'm looking forward to it. Chair, Kirk yeah. shouting. Fantastic. Yeah, looks great. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the few ones that gets the balance of like all the cast there, doesn't it? You know, everyone's got something to do. Oh, well, this was, uh, yeah, it's quite an ensemble by this point. Yeah. They're, they're all stars. They're all, you know. They gave yeah. Sula his own ship. That's what he wanted. Oh, yep. yeah. Um, <laughs> my favourite ship he's got. Oh. Sh- we'll get into the makeup stuff. Next week, I'm sure. But I was reading about Wikipedia on this uh, the other day. And apparently Chekhov wrote a treatment of this where everyone died except Spock. <laughs> <laughs> that was his plan for the film, just everyone got killed. Wow. Good Chek- for him. At least he didn't keep out. himself alive, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, yeah. didn't get made. Anyway, so that'll be next week. Some more Star Trek. Look forward to that. <laughs> Star Trek Six. Woo! It's been a long Woo! time, and we're finally Woo! back on the Star Trek tri- train. I'm really looking forward to next week. Yeah. And just before we go, Not a little hosting. plug for the future of the show. We're going to be doing after Star Trek three weeks of a nostalgia special, which hoping to get some audience interaction here. Oh. Um, so the idea is basically we're going to. Well, there's lots of films we watch now, youth, um, which. Um, we, of course we watch we still watch Back to the Future seen that loads Star Wars etc but there's films that we saw as children that we don't you know bring into our later life do we we've got forgotten so we're each going to pick a film from our childhood we haven't seen very recently and used to like but aren't sure about it we're going to reappraise it so if at home you've got any of these films as well get in touch let us know and um, yeah, we'll bring it up in nostalgia special. Three weeks of, <laughs> of heavy nostalgia because the kids love nostalgia, don't they? It's, uh, it's all about nostalgia. It's very in, isn't well, it? Well, to a kid, nostalgia is last week history. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all, all last week. <laughs> yeah. It's like what happened in Power Rangers last week. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we never watched that, did we? That guy who suggested no. Power Rangers. That's not our nostalgia. No, yeah. Don't suggest no. that. We're not watching it. Sorry. No. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I think that's all. Thanks Anything for the suggestion, else? though. Yeah. Um, cool. Anything else? We're all done? Yeah. Don't. Yeah, I think we're good. Brill. We'll see you next week for Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. Say bye-bye, Chris. Cheerio. Say bye-bye, Alex. That's all. Bye.